Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. Edmundo Sosa, Edmundo Sosa, Rob Thompson is pushing all the right buttons. Raise your hand, okay, if you complained when you saw Bryson Stott out of the lineup again. It stings. You want to see this kid in the action right now. Go help this squad do something. But Rob elects to put this, this like defensive replacement character in. And the dude is stepping up big time between him and JT Real Muto. It's outrageous. Rob Thompson is one of the most electric dudes when it comes to that that I've ever seen. That tag down at second base, do me a favor. Let me know if you've ever seen something like that in your damn life. All right, and JT gets interfered with, and he's still capable of doing the, uh, uh, you know, the impossible, if you will. He's also in the ninth inning making a catch that makes no sense to me. If you can't tell, all right, this is something that I'm enjoying out of these two. But when I saw the lineup, I thought to myself, if I'm Rob Thompson, maybe, just maybe, if you want to keep Sosa in because he's swinging a hot bat, why don't we maybe take Alec Bohm out, slide him over at shortstop, excuse me, I'll, I'll put a Bryson Stott at shortstop, and have Alec Bohm play third base? Makes sense to me. You can keep the hot bat in there, but come on, you got to let Stott play. But I got to give him credit. Not only did he push the right buttons with the lineup, but even with the bullpen. Because when he looked at who was starting the eighth inning, they went with Jose Alvarado because of the top of the order. And they figured if we're going to play our numbers here, we'll have Connor Brogdon face a different area of the lineup. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't pretty. I wasn't feeling lovely after the bomb to left field. And then you see base runners on. We all thought the same thing. But he bared down, utilized that changeup, got a nice swing and miss to get a big-time K in the inning. And, uh, uh, you know, perfectly, ironically enough, Sosa ends up ending the game with the play at second base. But all around, I see here from a chat in the chat room saying Thompson needs to shuffle the top of the lineup. Look, I don't care if they do. All right, I'm okay if they do. Kyle Schwarber looks to be in a bit of a funk. Bryce Harper, not only did he show that sign of discomfort, he stayed in the game, which was massive, but he gets picked off at first base. He, he just doesn't look engaged right now the right way. Like, he looks lost. In what world does Bryce Harper seem to be that out of whack? We're used to seeing him too dialed in, too focused in. If you put Stott at the top of the lineup, could I live with it? No doubt. I know that there are some screaming for Gene Segura. And I love to see him with this edge. There was a lot of praise throughout the last 24 hours on what he showed when JT was intentionally walked, saying this is my time, right? And plus, I believe it was against the Mets when he did the Air Jordan fist pump running around first. I love that it's in here, and you can see what he can do when he's locked. But I guess this is what I, and maybe it's a flaw on my part, but this is what I automatically think about when I see that, and then I also hear the praise. Why does it take an intentional walk to get you that fired up? Because if Gene Segura just did that, imagine. It's been showing itself here and there throughout the 162. And I don't think I, I really remember or recall too many times I've seen Gene with that jump in his game. And that electrocution factor. Very rarely, if so. But it's unreal. Like, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I think it matters right now. We picked out so many players where they had months. Kyle Schwarber had a month. Well, we're going through the Bailey Falter stretch, by the way. Five and a third. You know, started out a little bit playing around, and here comes a run. You know, okay. 
But he settled in. And Bilotti helped out. You're shorthanded. We did get updates on Sir Anthony and Zach Eflin. So look for their rehab stints. Which, please, come back fast or any pitcher. I'm not the highest on Zach Eflin, but bodies are bodies at this point. And anything that can help when your bullpen is crumbling. You didn't have David Robertson and still managed. Say what you will about the Marlins, but this team had to prove to us that that West Coast swing was more of the hiccup, more of just it happens. It's baseball. So you have an unfortunate six-game stretch. It just sucks for us because, well, when that happens the start of September, no shit we're going to feel a certain type of way. Good defense was played, though. How about Reese Hoskins at first? And Bailey Falter getting the first base. I didn't see that out of Noah Syndergaard in his last start. I know Ranger Suarez always seems to get bothered when his teammates give the other team extra outs. And I'm sure that is troublesome. And I'm sure that does hurt you when it is painful. But you got to face the music and you got to handle the adversity. And I don't think he has done that very well as of late. Bailey Falter got there. Matt Veerling makes a great play out in right field. He had two hits, too. Came around the score. You don't see the Sosa without the Veerling. The Sosa double. <laughs> what? What? Isn't it funny? Because whenever it seems there is a Sosa little run, right? Let's call it that, if you will. They're games. The Edmundo Sosa game. They become seven unreal, mind-blowing sequences with a very short time frame. Like some guys get hot, but there's a difference between getting hot and then taking over games. That's what it feels like with him. It's the no-doubt, no-brainer stud of the night. Crazy. It really was. I think there was another defensive play. Oh, I mentioned the Matt Veerling one. Yeah, the Matt Veerling, the JT Real Mucho with this cannon down to second. They're still trying. If I was the manager of Miami, you know what I'd say? I look at everybody in the clubhouse and say, you're gone. Look at me. L look at me right now. You will never play again in my under my supervision if you're going to try and steal on JT Real Mucho. It's bad baseball. It's not doing your research. The best players in all of the land trying to take a base doesn't have a damn shot. So everybody else, you're moronic. <laughs> I mean, that's just what it is. This JT Real Muto, this is special. This is must watch. I got to give JT a lot of credit. He turned it around. But I am at the point where the ceiling of what JT is, I'm not surprised by this being a ceiling. I just didn't anticipate it because of how long it was bad. Sort of like with Castellanos. I mean, I don't think I'm going to get the best Castellanos. He's been better. He's by far where... I thought the bar would be set. And if anybody's satisfied with it, and don't give me batting average, there's still a lot more in the tank in Castellanos. I don't think we see it this year, especially now with where he's at physically. But JT, every at-bat, I'm on the edge of my toes because I expect dominance, because I expect him to win the battle. And more times than not, he does. This lineup, though, I think it's due for a juggle. Now, we've seen the New York Yankees be stubborn with their approach. And I just bring that up because Yankees fans are very upset. And you look at the way that Boone is setting up the lineup and they're forcing guys in there who have had their issues. And, I, you know, at times in this sport, it's just a long grind. It's a long journey. Moving around a bit could be something. You're just looking for a spark, something for someone to grab onto it. Are you at this point in the lineup with Schwarber? Maybe. Maybe you are. If they stayed with it, would I hate it? Not necessarily. If it continued for another week to be piss poor, then yeah, maybe. 
But as of right now, I'm not going to go too crazy on Rob. I want Bryce to be batting third, but realistically, Bryce looks out of whack. His body language tells me everything. As soon as he got picked off and he got caught and his footwork was slow and he just stayed there for a half a second realizing, damn it, draining. How many times have we questioned the leadership? I'm not attacking his leadership. I'm tying it together with the body language. Every single player sees what he's doing and it feeds into the rest of the team. Luckily, Edmundo Sosa is greater than Barry Bonds, so you're able to sneak away with the win regardless. If it happens once, not a big deal. If it starts happening twice, which now this is back-to-back games, and I'm not used to it. I think it's bizarre. We haven't seen this, this view of him. I think he's probably hurting a bit physically more than he thought he would. There's a lot involved in coming back from an injury, holding the baseball bat, whether you get stung or just fatigue. You're just fatigued and your thumb hurts. I remember having to play around. They give you like this. It's almost like a trampoline. That's probably a horrible way to describe it. But it's a circle, and it's got all sorts of octagons, and you put your hands in it, and you just keep working the thumb over and over and over again. Well, I remember doing that for a little bit of time, and then the next day was awful. The day after that, it felt even worse. And he's such a violent, violent guy at the plate. Like, his swings are vicious. You would think just fatigue with your body normally without having surgery would somewhat break down at some point because of how harsh it is. It's a reason why when he gets a hold of one, he gets a hold of one. But we all see it with the torque of his body. It's crazy. It, it's not fun, though. Seeing Bryce this down isn't fun, but it's on him. Like, come on, dude. Get your head out of your ass. He's not above the criticism. Let's go, Bryce. This is the time. This fan base wants it. They want it bad. Help us get there. They won the baseball game. They won the baseball game. But that's an angle of tonight's game. Is what the hell is going on with Bryce? Um, All right, I guess we can go to the Anytime Hotline, 856-442-9805. That's the phone number to hear from you all out there. The Anytime Hotline is brought to you by, what's that? SeatGeek promo code bro. So do you want $20 off of your purchase? That eliminates all those fees. Get yourself to a game today. Get yourself to a ball game. Plenty of empty seats there at Citizens Bank Park. So go show your support. Utilize that money on a cold one or something. It's on Broads. Promo code Broads. Get yourself to a game today. All right, let's kick things off. Here we go. Bailey Falter loves sex. Um, awesome. Oh, JT Real Muto as well. Uh, that's literally ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. So we won the games that we were supposed to win. Tomorrow, I don't know what to expect. We've rocked Alcantara's past two or three starts, so I'm expecting Alcantara to deal. But, no, I'm hyped up. That's a big, huge win. Brogdon, I think, is – I think Brogdon's hurt. I'm not going to lie. Uh, he just hasn't been in himself as Velo's down. I think they should check him out. But, anyway, great win. Um, I'm so excited uh, that we won that. I um, – Going to hold my breath for tomorrow, but I'm just going to celebrate tonight. That was freaking awesome. No reason to get too upset thinking about tomorrow right now. I mean, this team is handling their business. Uh, Alcantara, no doubt, that's a good thing to bring up, is they have beaten this guy for a good chunk of change this season. So if you think about it, is it possible that you're not going to have that much great success? All these good pitchers will sometimes get your number. Now, if I remember correctly, based off the fact that this team hasn't won many baseball games, uh, they ha- he, they have been through a little tougher stretch with him on the mound. This is his last three starts. So on August 21st in L.A., he faced the Dodgers three and two-third innings, ten hits, six runs. 
Now, keep in mind that the Philadelphia Phillies are not exactly who the Los Angeles Dodgers are, but still, for him to have that type of night, it's not what we normally see. Uh, six days later, he faced the Dodgers, this time in Miami. He went the distance and went nine innings with one run. So he did bounce back. But after that, September 2nd in Atlanta, five innings pitched, seven hits, six runs. Is it possible that it's just that part of a funk for him? And a lot of guys at this time of the year catches up to them. That's why you got to dig deep. That's why you got to grit your teeth and say, not this year, because it makes sense for you to somewhat show some bleeding. You never want to show your opponent that you're hurt. That was the number one thing we were told when we were playing sports. Don't bend over to catch some breath. Don't lean on your knees. No, no, no. Stand up straight and keep going. Do not stop. Well, in, in theory here from these players, this is the time of year where it's easy to show your concerns, and to show your weaknesses. That's why you think about the long haul. Maybe that's happening with Sandy, and I sure hope so. But I need them to help us out here. They have to keep us. They have to grab us. This is the way to do it. How many fans went into this series, especially after getting swept, thinking, well, that logo says it all. Of course it's going to come back to bite you, the Miami Marlins. It's what we always think. Well, they started off nice. They did. And by the way, the Brewers blow. <laughs> I was doing last night's postgame show, and we were looking in live at the scores, and we saw them with a the big-time lead. The Oakland A's did some damage against the Atlanta Braves in the same exact night. But they ended up losing, allowing so many runs late. Then the Brewers get crushed again today. I'm not proud to say this. And as long as the Phillies keep winning, they're in control of their own destiny. But there was a part of me that felt this is the year based off the fact that it's impossible. Like, do you know how bad it's going to have to be if they slip out of this one? Seriously. Regardless what happens with the Padres, and I saw the Padres... We're booing Juan Soto pretty heavily. I'm trying to look exactly for what his stats are, but it was bad. I just saw it on my timeline not too long ago, and I feel like I want to find it again. So give me one second, because it is a pretty wild stat thinking of what Juan Soto is. Here he is, Bob Nightingale. Juan Soto, who's hitting 071, which is 2 for 28 over his last nine games and has been recently booed by the Padre fans. He ended up, oh, this is a different one, but he ends up leaving the game after being hit with a pitch in the right shoulder. Well, that's terrible news. That's horrible. That's not what you want to see. But that's crazy to think that Juan Soto's doing that. Pressure gets on. It's a little bit different, although... Did do some pretty nasty and gnarly things in a Washington Nationals uniform where there was some big things on the line, I guess. I guess. But anyway, Brewers suck. That's the point. That's the point I'm trying to make. All right, another call. Here we go. Hey, bros. Uh, this is uh, Jordan Kahn from uh, East Philly. Uh, I want to let you know that, you know, I'm proud of you and – for getting on the uh, the talk show on the Philly, I see you on there on the Sportsnet or Comcast, and uh, you know I listen to you every night, and you tell the truth, you tell everything as it is, and that's that uh, you know everybody wants to like bull crap everything, and me listening to you, you tell everything as it is, and that's great, man. That's a Philly fanatic, like that. You're a Philly fan from heart, and like that's who I am too, and I. You know, I really do love you, man. Thanks. Oh, thank you, man. I'm in my feels right now. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate all this. But look, that's that's all it is. I mean, I just sit down in my basement in this studio of mine, and I just let you know how I'm feeling. That's all. That's all it is. I'm just letting you know. When they suck, they suck. You're going to see steam. Just pour it out of my ears. Coming out of my nose. When things are great. 
streaking on Broad Street. I mean, it's just how it works around here. But no, in all seriousness, thank you so much, man. It, it has been a lot of fun and a lot of excitement in, in regards to the show at the Fanatic and what's going on here. So thank you all who have watched me here on YouTube for as long as it has been going and you know, turning into NBC Sports Philadelphia Monday through Friday from 2 to 6 and embracing what's going on over there with Tyrone, Ricky Bo, and Jen because it's been an absolute blast and I really enjoy talking to you guys and having you tune in as much as as much as possible. But um, we have another text message coming in here. The text messages are flying, so I appreciate it. Uh, Ryan, is something off with Bryce? Even running out of the box yesterday confused me. Uh, I heard you on The Fanatic with Jason Stark talking about how he wears his feelings on his sleeve. Is that okay with you? Uh, well, Ryan, thank you for tuning in as well. In, in regards to is that okay with me? I mean, of course. What makes him so special is the fact that he gets you those hustle doubles. He pushes you the extra mile. Uh, he... He rallies. I mean, he carried you to win an NL MVP last year. Is it okay with me that he plays that way? No doubt. Um, I think he's got to find a way to get out of this thing, and it can't linger very long. This game is all about facing adversity. Every player is going to have it at some point. Now, what we need him to do is step out of this. Like, this is discomfort for sure, and we need more. But is there something happening behind the scenes that we don't know about physically or maybe after tonight there's more involved on that side of things I don't know he does wear his emotions on his sleeve but you know we say this all the time in sports with certain players there are guys that play with that edge let's use Derek Barnett as an example this may be an awful example but I'm just trying to go with the flow here Derek Barnett is a guy that gets in your face and he plays with that line, but unfortunately, he goes over the line way too much, where if you think about it, does that outweigh the negative or the positive, uh, he's too stuck with the issues and the flags, and he's constantly getting your team in trouble. He doesn't get enough sacks and take over the game where maybe you have the balance and you think it benefits your team. With Bryce Harper, because he does play with everything on his sleeve, that helps you out 80% of the time. This might get 20% of the time or 15% of the time, so 85% to 15 in the positive direction. All right, clearly I'm in a better position with him doing this than if he wasn't. This does seem to be the most defeated he looks that I could remember in quite some time. But it also makes sense when you go through what he went through. At the same time, if you're going to lace them up and put the uniform on, I mean, there are going to be a level of expectations that I need from you, you know, to help this team out get to desperately what we want, which is red towels all through October. Maybe a little bit more fans than what we saw there tonight. Just saying. Just saying. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see how this series shapes up tomorrow.